death wobble. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's my situation, right? Over the winter, I put some new axles in that tan WJ behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Um, now it has death wobble since I put them in. Uh, I'm trying to get that Jeep ready for a vacation in a few weeks. I gotta take it on the highway for about five hours and I need to fix it. So I got three weeks to fix the death wobble, totally enough time. But what is death wobble? Uh, the boring definition is it is the rapid oscillation of steering components uh, or suspension components uh, during a driving condition. What that means is you're driving down the road in your Jeep uh, or your other vehicle um, you either get to a certain speed or you hit a bump or you start to make a turn and the Jeep goes crazy. Uh, your wheels are shaking back and forth like this, your steering wheel is going crazy, the whole Jeep is uh, shaking like it's about to fall apart. It's, um, it's embarrassing, first of all, if you've got passengers in the Jeep. Uh, it's incredibly dangerous because you're essentially, uh, you do not have control over the vehicle. Most of the time, the only way to stop death wobble is to either slow way down or, in some cases, stop altogether. Um, it's also incredibly traumatic for your vehicle. Um, you're wearing out parts, you might break other parts. Um, so if you have death wobble, you want to fix it immediately for a host of reasons. Who gets death wobble? Uh, sadly, this is kind of a Jeep thing these days because um, you can only get death wobble if you have a solid front axle. If you have independent front suspension, death wobble is not a problem for you. The WJs had solid front axles, ZJs, XJs, TJs, YJs, all the, all Wranglers, um, all of the original Cherokees and Grand Cherokees up to the WK. All Dodge trucks have them, like heavy duty uh, Fords and uh, you know GM um, have solid front axles. So your Toyota friends are not gonna get death wobble, something that they will probably remind you of pretty often. Sucks for us, but uh, it's not actually that complicated of a problem to fix as people seem to think. Um, it's not voodoo, it's not magic. There is a reason you have death wobble. There's a logical reason, which means there's a logical way to fix it. Um, there's a systematic approach that you can take to cure death wobble, and it's not, doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to take a long time. Uh, I actually got, I had an XJ last year that some girl traded because it had death wobble. I spent about $200 on a new track bar and some other little things, and that XJ was, was good to go. So this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to go through what I think are the main causes of death wobble, are the secondary causes of death wobble, show you how to check for these things, and then ultimately tell you how to fix them. Um, though the how-tos may end up being a second video. So in my opinion, in my experience, and uh, just a little background on my experience, I have cured death wobble in two of my own Jeeps. Um, three if I am successful on this one and I've helped several other people diagnose death wobble in theirs I'm not saying I'm an expert in literally anything. Uh, I'm just saying I have cured death wobble before this is how I did it So here we go uh, The number one cause of death wobble in my opinion and most people's opinion track bar your track bar is either uh, out of alignment, that is to say you put a lift in and didn't replace your track bar or drop your track bar. Your track bar mounts are wallowed or ovaled out uh, from excessive play back and forth. The hole is no longer round and there's play in your uh, mounts. Or the bushings are worn out or maybe even gone, which also is leading to excessive play. Your track bar is what locates your axle underneath your vehicle. So every time you turn, every time you go over a bump, if you use your vehicle for off-road uh, purposes, there's absolutely a ton of stress being put on the track bar and those mounts. And what will happen a lot of times if they're not tightened properly uh, or just, you know, uh, over time they wear out, they'll start to get a little bit of play back and forth. And so every time you turn, every time you go over a bump, it moves back and forth and it slowly either wallows out the hole or ruins the um, bushing. And so what happens is you go over a bump and uh, the force goes into your tire, goes through your axle, goes up your track bar, and instead of dissipating into the body like it should, uh, it, the track bar has room to move around and that starts a chain reaction that oscillates your entire axle and, and wheel and front suspension and steering linkage, causing your Jeep to go crazy. Uh, the number two um, most uh, likely cause of death wobble is worn out ball joints and for the same reason um, as a track bar you know it's a part that wears out the um, 
you know, the actual ball joint gets a little bit of play, so you go over a bump, and now instead of the whole system moving together, there's play in it, and uh, one wheel starts to uh, quiver, if you will, and it sends that chain reaction, and now your whole Jeep is going crazy. Uh, number three, in my opinion, um, tie rod ends which uh, I don't know if anybody else has a WJ that has these problems. I tear through tie rod ends. I need to change my tie rods once a year. Um, when they get loose, the steering wheel gets a lot of play in it. It gets a little sloppy. Sometimes you hear like clunking or clicking when you go to turn. And it's the same thing. There's actually a ball joint on the end of that tie rod end and you get play in between you know, the ball and the cup. And uh, now when you hit a bump, you're, you're, you're whole steering system's not moving as one, there's a little bit of play and things start to quiver back and forth, and uh, now you have death wobble. Uh, number four, and uh, this was actually the problem along with a uh, maladjusted track bar in that XJ I was talking about, wheel bearings. On Jeeps like this, um, it's a unit bearing uh, setup. So your spindle and everything uh, is comes together and then it's bolted onto your axle. Uh, it's actually one of the best things about Jeep. If you've ever had to change a press-on bearing, like on a Subaru or something, you have to take the whole knuckle off, find somebody with a press, press it out, hope you press it back in straight. It's a goddamn nightmare. Here, uh, what is it, three bolts, three 12-point bolts comes right out. Four, I don't remember. No, it's three. Three bolts, doesn't matter. Um, what happens is your wheel bearing does wear out after a while and um, you'll get some play in there and now when you hit a bump, you know, your wheel has some room to go like this and it just starts a chain reaction. Now, those are the top four causes, but I don't know that I've ever heard of death wobble that was just one of those things. It's usually a few things and if you've been experiencing it for a little bit, meaning it's hit a couple times, it's gonna take other stuff out with it. It's incredibly traumatic to your vehicle. The, the extra stresses that it puts on all the components. Um, usually when death wobble hits, I end up changing all of those components within a few months of curing it uh, because they just, they take a beating. Um, there are also a number of I'm going to call them secondary causes. I have never seen them be a primary cause of death wobble. I don't think that they alone could cause death wobble, but they will certainly um, exacerbate death wobble that's already there, and they will help trigger it. Uh, the first is misaligned or poorly balanced tires. Um, if your tires are misaligned, uh, you know, they're going to be fighting each other going down the roads to, you know, fighting to be going straight. And that movement, if you have death wobble, you have play in your other, uh, you know, uh, steering linkage components is, you know, it's going to trigger it. It's going to trigger the death wobble. Um, uh, poorly balanced, same thing. If your tire's shaking going down the highway, you know, you hit, you know, if you ever had poorly balanced tires, you're usually fine at 20 and 30 and 40, but then you get it up at like 55 and you feel it start to shake. Well, you hit 55, it starts to shake, it triggers your death wobble. Um, also, control arm mounts. If your control arm mounts are out of whack, if they're uh, poorly adjusted, if you have a serious lift in and you kept your stock arms, um, or something's bent, you know, when you hit a bump, it's not going to operate with the same geometry and with the same efficiency that it was designed to and that could very easily um, trigger death wobble. Now let's talk about what does not cure death wobble. A new steering stabilizer does not cure death wobble. A bigger steering stabilizer does not cure death wobble. A dual, triple, quadruple steering stabilizer setup does not cure death wobble. Those things cure bump steer, which is not death wobble. And this is the biggest misconception and the spot where most people waste the most money and get the most frustrated when chasing death wobble. When death wobble hits, you're driving down the road, your steering wheel goes crazy. If you're new to jeeping, your thinking is steering wheels going crazy because of input from the road, add another steering stabilizer, add a bigger steering stabilizer, add six steering stabilizers. That's not it. Why? What, what did we just talk about? Death wobble is caused by play in your steering or suspension components. Adding a steering damper is not going to solve the play. It may, in rare cases, mask it momentarily for a short amount of time, a false sense of security. But a steering stabilizer does not cause nor does it cure death wobble. Bump steer is when you hit a bump 
and it pushes your steering wheel. Then yeah, go get your Moog Trail Boss, your Rough Country Dual Steering Stabilizer set up, throw that down there and it'll cure your bump steer. But it is not gonna cure your death wobble. So don't get those two mixed up. Now let's get to how to check the things that I just mentioned. Okay, so now let's try to identify some of the components that we were just talking about. The first thing that uh, I always check when I have a death wobble situation is the track bar. That's this bar right here. It runs from the top mount, which is the body side mount, down to the axle side mount, which is attached to the axle on the passenger side. This Jeep actually had death wobble. Very minor, but uh, the problem was this hole was wallowed out. So what I did was I welded a grade 8 washer on there to bring it back into round, and I will do another video on that sometime. Uh, but the first thing you're going to do is just grab a hold of it, you know? Uh, try to move it, see if there's any play. Get a wrench on your bolts make sure that they are not loose. All right, now the second component we talked about was ball joints, and they're down here. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm gonna show you how to check them later. So we're gonna skip them for the minute. Number three, tie rod ends. That's the end of these bars. It's these threaded bars that have ball joints on the end essentially, and they go into your track bar and your drag link. And uh, the first and easiest way to check them is to grab a hold and you try to move them back and forth. And um, if they're brand new, they probably won't have any play. If they're a little bit used like this, there'll be some play, but they're tight, you know? Um, and that's okay. These probably have the way my WJ1s go out, another six months. Um, what you wanna look out for is if you, you know, move it up like this and it doesn't stay. That's when you know they're really worn out. Um, while you're under here, it makes sense before you do anything else to just take a look around, you know? Uh, check your... Uh, control arm mount see how they look um, look and see if there's any sign that a wheel bearing has gone bad which sometimes will be uh, grease um, layering the inside of this wheel um, look for ripped boots in your CVs look for ripped boots on all of your ball joints meaning that the ball joint on your tie rods the ball joints on your actual ball joints see if any of the boots look ripped uh, that's a good sign that that might be where your problem is what happens is the boot rips the grease is able to come out dirt is able to get in and the joint fatigues and fails much much quicker uh, so that's the first thing I do so let's say this vehicle did have death wobble and I didn't see anything in this primary visual test well now we'll move to the other one that has death wobble and do the more in-depth test all right now you can check the remaining components that we mentioned with nothing more than floor jack a pry bar and a piece of wood. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is jack up just one side of the front of the vehicle. You don't need to go very high. Just get one tire a couple inches off the ground. What you wanna do, grab the wheel at three o'clock and at nine o'clock and see if there's any play. Then you wanna grab it at six o'clock and 12 o'clock and see if there's any play. Essentially, if there's any play here, it could be either the wheel bearing or the tie rod. If there's a play here, it's got to be the wheel bearing. Uh, so that can help you narrow it down. If you use this with the data you grabbed when you were underneath before, you might be able to figure out what's wrong with it. All right, the next test is for the ball joints. And this is by far the best way I've found to check the ball joints. Um, I'm a really big fan of this trick. What you're doing is you're taking the pry bar and the piece of wood and you're creating a lever underneath the wheel. And what we're gonna do is pry the wheel up and see if there's any play, up and down play, in the ball joints. Here we go. Now it's hard to tell, but there is play in this wheel. And I believe that this is where my death wobble is coming from. Let's get you a closer look. All right, I don't know if you can tell where that play is, right there. Can you see that? I believe that that's where my death wobble is coming from. All right, so I'm not sure if you could really see what I was talking about in that last test, but essentially the ball joints in this Jeep are shot. Uh, all four of them, um, I got this axle out of a junkyard and I kinda knew I should have changed the ball joints. 
um, before I put it in the Jeep, but I was anxious and I wanted to see how it worked and they looked all right. Um, that's my fault. Next time I swap an axle, uh, I will definitely be changing everything that I can before I put it in the Jeep because why not? It's a hell of a lot easier when it's out and when it's not already on the road. So, um, I happen to have found my cause of death wobble. Uh, here is the last test you would do, and I'm just going to explain this one because it's, uh, it's a really good test and I almost guarantee that you will be able to find your death wobble if you do this. So you get down on the ground in the position that we're in right now. You get a buddy to get in the Jeep, turn it on, leave it in park. What they're going to do is turn the wheel from lock to lock back and forth, back and forth, nice and slow. Uh, while you are underneath here and what you're going to be doing is paying attention to any place there's a point of movement. That's going to be all of your tie rod ends. That's going to be your track bar mounts, both lower and upper. That's going to be your ball joints, which are in there. That's going to be your control arm mounts. Everything in the front end that moves, you're going to want to pay attention to. And you will see play, if you have death wobble, you will see play somewhere in the system. Whether it's the track bar mounts, like I said, that upper one gives you trouble, or tie rod ends, uh, ball joints. You may even see your wheel cocking in or out. That'd be a sign of a, um, a bad wheel bearing. Um, but if you hang out down here, uh, when you do it though, put your tires, get your tires on some dirt. Don't do it on the driveway, it's not great for your tires and it's a little easier on the whole system turning lock to lock like that on dirt. So parks your front wheels are on dirt or at the very least on some um, gravel. Get under here and just have your buddy turn back and forth lock to lock until you've checked every single point of movement. Alright, well I have my marching orders, ball joints, which uh, are in the mail right now from Rock Auto. Uh, I will let you know how that goes. Um, Good luck with your own death wobble problems. I'd love to hear what you thought of this video. I'd love to hear what you thought about my process. Uh, I'd love to hear if your process for finding death wobble and curing death wobble is different. Uh, I don't plan on stopping driving Jeeps with these solid front axles anytime soon, which means I'm going to be dealing with death wobble for a long, long time. So let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to uh, improve my process. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later.